Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on fractions and how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. That's just our objective today. We're going to review adding, subtracting, multiply, and dividing fractions. And here is what I'd like you focused on today, what I want you thinking about as we proceed through the lesson. Can you answer these questions when we are done? How are adding and subtracting fractions similar? How are multiplication and division with fractions related? So I want you thinking about making connections between adding and subtracting and connections between multiplying and dividing. Again, it's what I always say, let's stop and think before we do. So understanding a fraction is really important before we begin. And a fraction is a part of a whole. So when I look at the fraction 2 fifths, remember this is 2 divided by 5. 2 is our numerator, which is our part. 5 is my denominator, which is my whole. So we're saying 2 fifths are two parts of a whole in five sections. So if I look at a circle that's divided into five equal sections, the circle is my whole, and each of these are my parts. If I'm talking about two parts, I'm going to shade in two. So this green area represents two-fifths of my circle, two parts of the whole of five. Let's now review adding fractions. So our steps to add fractions are first, if it's necessary, to find a common denominator. Then we're going to add our numerators, keeping the common denominator. We do not add the denominators. If necessary, we're going to simplify our sum. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. So when we add fractions, we're finding the sum. And where final answer, we want to make sure is in simplest form and see if there are any common factors between the numerator and the denominator. Let's do one together. So we're going to find the sum of 3 fifths and 3 eighths. We're going to first look for a common denominator. So 5 and 8 do not have any common factors. So we're going to multiply 5 times 8 and our common denominator is 40. So notice I have my fraction 3 fifths right here. To get a 40 for a denominator, I need to multiply the denominator by 8, which means I must do the same to my numerator. Here, I have my 3 eighths here. To get 40 for my denominator, I need to multiply 8 by 5. And notice I'm multiplying the numerator by 5 also. So let's do this math out. 3 times 8 is 24. 5 times 8 is 40. 3 times 5 is 15, and 8 times 5 is 40. Now we're going to add just our numerators, and we're going to keep our denominator. 24 plus 15 is 39, and our denominator of 40. This is in simplest form because the values 39 and 40 do not have any common factors. Now this one's your turn. I would like you to pause the video here, Add the fractions, come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So the first thing I hope you did was find a common denominator of 28. 7 and 4 do not have any factors in common, so the least common denominator is 28. So let's find that common denominator. Here's my fraction, 2 sevenths. I have to multiply the denominator by 4 to get 28, which means I must also multiply my numerator by 4. Here's my fraction, my second. To multiply 4 by 7 gives me 28, so I must also multiply my numerator by 7. All right, let's multiply. So 2 times 4 is 8 over my 7 times 4 of 28. 1 times 7 is 7 over my denominator of 28. So now I'm going to add my numerators, keeping my denominator. 8 plus 7 is 15 over a denominator of 28. This is in simplest form because 15 and 28 do not have any common factors. Now let's review subtracting fractions. To subtract fractions, first we're going to say we need to find a common denominator if it's necessary. 
Second, we're going to subtract the numerators and keep the common denominator. Do not subtract the denominators. And if necessary, we're going to simplify our difference. So remember, when we're subtracting fractions, the answer to that is difference. You're finding the difference when you subtract. Let's do this one together. So my denominators are 11 and 3. Those are not common and they do not have any common factors. So I'm going to multiply 11 times 3 and get a common denominator of 33. So let's set this up to find our common denominator. Notice I have my fraction 7 elevenths here and I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3 to get that denominator of 33. And here's my second fraction 1 third and I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 11 to get my common denominator of 33. So let's multiply. 7 times 3 is 21 over my 11 times 3, which is 33. 1 times 11 is 11 all over my de common denominator of 33. I think this step is really helpful to write down and not do in your head. That's where a lot of students make very silly mistakes because they tried to do too much thinking before they wrote something down. So now we're ready to subtract our numerators. Remember, you're going to keep your denominator. 21 subtract 11 is 10. 10 30 over 33. They do not have anything in common, so that's in simplest form, and that's my difference. Your turn. I'd like you to write this fraction down, find the difference, so go ahead and subtract. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's check your solution. So we're going to find a common denominator of 24. 3 and 8 do not have any factors in common, so 3 times 8 is 24. So let's set this up to find our common denominator. Here's my fraction 2 thirds. I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 8 to force this denominator of 24. Here's my fraction of 3 eighths, and I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3 to get my denominator of 24. So we multiply 2 times 8 is 16 over my denominator of 24. 3 times 3 is 9, again over my denominator of 24. So now I'm ready to subtract my numerators and keep my denominator. 16 subtract 9 gives me 7 over 24. This is in simplest form. There are no common factors between the numerator and denominator, so that is my difference, 7 24ths. Now we're going to review multiplying fractions. To multiply fractions, if necessary, we're going to simplify. So this isn't a very must for a first step, but I think it makes everything easier because then you end up with smaller numbers and you can do your simplifying first. So we're going to look for common factors between numerators and denominators to see if we can simplify. Then we're going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. If necessary, we're going to verify that we have it in simplest form. If we've done our first step correctly, this won't be necessary. So here we are. We have multiplied 2 sevenths by 7 ninths. So I'm going to look at my numerators and compare them to my denominators. I see that I have a 2 here, and neither 7 nor 9 have any factors of 2. But then, my second numerator is 7, and I see I have a 7 in the denominator. So, since we have a common factor between numerator and denominator of 7, I'm going to say that 7 divided by 7 is 1, and now I have it in simplest form. Multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 9 is 9, so 2 ninths. You could have done 2 times 7 and gotten 14, and then 7 times 9, which is 63, but then you have this big fraction and you have to simplify it. So both 14 and 63 have that common factor of 7, so you have to divide the numerator and denominator both by 7, and you get 2 over 9. So you'd get the same solution. For me, I find this easier. If you like the second way better, then you can do that one. Now it's your turn. I would like you to write down, find the product. Remember, product is the answer when you multiply. Make sure your answer is in simplest form. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Let's check your solution. So 
We're looking at our numerators. We're looking at our denominators. There are no common factors between them, so we're just going to multiply. 5 times 1 is 5. 7 times 3 is 21, and it's in simplest form. Now we're going to review dividing fractions. To divide fractions, we're going to first rewrite the multipli to multiplication. So we're going to change all dividing to multiply. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And you may have heard this before. Keep the first fraction, change your division sign to multiplication, and find the reciprocal, which means to flip the fraction. So flipping is the same as writing the reciprocal. Then we're going to check to see if it's necessary to simplify, and we're going to multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. So you can see that if we take our first step of dividing and do keep, change, flip, which is multiply by the reciprocal, then it's the same rules as we did in the previous slide. So then we're going to make sure that we have simplified it all correctly before we circle our answer. So let's do one together. So we're finding the quotient. Quotient is the answer when we divide of 2 fifths divided by 1 half. So keep 2 fifths, change the division sign to multiplication, and flip. So the reciprocal of 1 half when we flip it is 2. So here we go. 2 fifths, change to multiply, and flip. So instead of 1 half, the reciprocal is 2 over 1. We've changed the numerator and denominator locations. Now we're checking, we have two twos in the numerator, but just a five and a one in the denominator. So there's nothing to simplify because there's no common factors between the numerator and denominator. So now we're just going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Two times two is four, five times one is five, and our answer is four fifths. Your turn. Please write down the fractions and find the quotient. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready to check your solution. Welcome back. Let's find our solution. So the first thing we're going to do is keep change to multiplication and multiply by the reciprocal, which is flipping the fraction. So keep change. And here's my flipped fraction. My reciprocal of 1 sixth is 6 over 1. Now I'm going to look to see if I have any common factors, 7 and 6. The denominator is 11. There are no common factors, so we can now just multiply our numerators and multiply our denominators. 7 times 6 is 42, and 11 times 1 is 11. 42 elevenths is in simplest form. It's what we call an improper fraction. I am not going to change this to a mixed number because I'm actually preparing my students to solve algebraic equations and we leave them as improper fractions there. If your teacher is asking you to change it into an improper fraction, I mean the improper's to mixed numbers, then you're going to find out 11 goes into 42 how many times and keep your denominator of 11 and put your remainder in the numerator. Now I want to close off this video by giving you four more practice problems, one for each operation. So let's see if you can put this all together. Remember, stop, pause, and think before you begin. And I want you thinking about what connections you can make to adding and subtracting, and what connections can you make to dividing and multiplying. So please pause, try these, and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and do the first one together. So we're subtracting, and when we subtract, we need to find a common denominator. Now, 8 and 6 have factors in common. So you could have just said 48 and multiplied them together, but that's not the least common denominator, but it would work. But I'm going to use a common denominator of 24, and here's how I found that. 8 is 3 twos, 2 times 2 times 2. 6 is 2 times 3. So for a common denominator, I need one two, two twos, three twos, and one three. So when I do all that multiplying, I get three twos are eight times three is 24. So I didn't need to count this two for the six because it's represented with the two from the eight. So now my least common denominator is 24. And if I find my least common denominator, that helps later on with simplifying. So now I'm going to change eight and six to both have a denominator of 24 which means I have to multiply 8 by 3, and I'm going to multiply my numerator by 3 as well. So here's my fraction 2 eighths, and I'm multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 3. 
And then here's my fraction of 1 sixth. To get a denominator of 24, I need to multiply 6 by 4, and I need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 4. So let's do that multiplying. 2 times 3 is 6 over the 24. 1 times 4 is 4. Remember, this step is really important to show on paper. Now I'm ready to subtract my numerators and keep my denominator. 6 subtract 4 is 2 all over my common denominator of 24. And now I'm looking and they're both even, so I know they're both divisible by 2. So I need to simplify. So I'm going to divide both the numerator and denominator by 2. Remember, whatever you do to the numerator, you must also do to the denominator. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 24 divided by 2 is 12. So in simplest form, my difference is 1 twelfth. Number 2 was for us to divide. So we're going to have keep, change, flip. We're going to change division to multiply and flip 9 tenths to find the reciprocal, which is 10 ninths. So now I'm going to look to see if I have any common factors, and I do. I have a common factor between the 10 and the 4, so I'm going to divide both of those by 2 because they both have a common factor of 2. And 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now I'm ready to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 9 is 18, and 5 eighteenths is in simplest form. Here's number 3. You were to multiply. So the first thing we want to do is check for common factors. 1 fifth is in simplest form, but when I look at 8 twelfths, I can see that it is not. Both the numerator and denominator are divisible by 4. So when I divide by 4, I get 2. Divide by 4, I get 3. So now I can multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators. 2 times 1 is 2, and 3 times 5 is 15, and it's in simplest form. Our last problem was to add. So I'm looking for my least common denominator. If you didn't find the least, the smallest, then you could just simplify later on. But I know that my common denominator is going to be 10. So 5 times 2 is 10, so I don't need to do anything to 4 tenths. So 4 tenths, and now let's change this to a denominator of 10, which means I have to multiply by 2. So then I'm going to have 4 tenths, add 8 tenths, which is adding the numerators, keeping the denominators. 12 tenths is not in simplest form. I can simplify by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 2, giving me a simplified fraction of 6 fifths. Now, some of you might have seen that 4 tenths could be put into simplest form by writing, dividing both numerator and denominator by 2, which gives me 2 fifths. Well, now they have a common denominator of 5. 2 plus 4 is 6, and there we get our 6 fifths without having to do all of this. So sometimes it helps to check to see if the fractions are in simplest form before you begin performing your operation to them. And there you have it. That's how you add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. I hope that you found that adding and subtracting were similar because we want to find a common denominator, and then we only add or subtract the numerators. And then multiply and divide are similar because we change all division to a multiplication by keep, change, flip. So thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll subscribe and come back and join me again soon. Have a great day.